Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Extracellular Vesicle Club. This is an event of the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles. So I'd like to introduce now uh, Tomer Cooks and uh, Neta Regevrudsky, who are going to be co-moderating. And now switching gears to the second part of this uh, EV club, uh, Professor Karmit Levy, uh, again from the uh, Tel Aviv University. Karmit, you're welcome to share your screen. Thank you so much for this amazing club and, and for the opportunity. <clears throat> I'm talking with you about melanosomes, which are large exocellular vesicles. We're not talking about exosomes, we're talking about something at the size of 500 nanometer. They are lineage specific, specific to the melanocyte and to the melanoma lineage. Melanocytes are making them in our skin. They are filled with pigment. This is what gives us the skin tone because they are being made in melanocytes and are spread in our skin. And this is our, their major known role. It is a role for them to carry pigment and spread in our body. Um, externally, so we can see it mostly. Um, they carry different type of proteins inside the microRNA, and I will talk about all of that, but it's just to clearly say that they are very distinct than exosomes. So as I said, as Thomas said, I'm from Tel Aviv University, and I will talk with you today about melanoma. This is a short introduction into melanoma, into our research field. This is the skin, epidermis and dermis, here we have the melanocytes. It's a cell specific that is specialized with those dendrites to produce pigment and spread it in our skin. Following UV exposure, it will be the skin tanning. And we also have, each one of us has their own skin tone. Uh, when a bunch of them are together, we have a nevi. Uh, when there is a malignant transformation, either from the melanocyte or from the nevi, one would get melanoma. This is one type of skin cancer. Skin cancer can also be from keratinocytes, from the other type of the, the skin. But these type of skin cancers are much less aggressive. They are not metastasized almost. And the one that is lethal and metastasized is melanoma. And melanoma have these distinct growth stages. So the first stage of melanoma is this massive growth within the epidermis and cells are not penetrate down to the dermis and only in the dermis they meet blood veins and lymphatic veins so they can generate metastasis what kill the patients basically. But this stage where they are growing is a stage where, where we, we need to take care and, and see whether it's been seen outside as a suspicious nevus or some kinds of a growth, an abnormal growth on our skin. This can take years until the cells are migrating. So we have a great opportunity to understand what's going on here and to figure out ways to block it. So to prevent the cells from penetrating to the dermis. So that, that's a question that my lab was dealing with and dealing with. And it's basically trying to figure out the primary stage of melanoma. Here is pathology, pathology sections. Again, the epidermis and the dermis. This is normal skin. This is melanoma in situ. Just to remind you, this is the melanoma in situ, is the melanoma that is stuck in the epidermis still and not being penetrated to the dermis, invading to the dermis yet. So here you can see melanoma in situ, and this is the dermis is completely filled, all this purple, it's a nucleus of cells, um, melanoma is completely filling the dermis. These are the three stages that you can see in pathology that I was showing you in a, in a cartoon. Now you can appreciate that there is something going on in this dermis. So the dermis here and the dermis here look very distinct from each other. That caught, caught our attention. When we were staining for melanoma, okay, this is in red, we were staining for melanoma or melanocytes. You can see here the melanocyte in the normal skin and then melanoma stuck. This is the, we marked here the epidermis. Melanoma is still here. And this is melanoma completely invading into the dermis, very aggressive disease. And you can appreciate again how the, the dermis is very dif different from each other here and here. And melanoma is still haven't invaded yet to the dermis, but the dermis somehow is changing 
in close proximity to melanoma, it's like, it's like almost the dermis is sensing that there is some tumor going on on top of it, right, right above it. When we were zooming in into that area of dermal fibroblasts that are proliferating and gathering here, we saw some red dots. Melanoma is stained in red, and we saw some red dots here. When we stained for melanosomes, these are the vesicles that melanocytes and melanoma knows to produce, we saw clearly that the dermis is filled with melanosomes superior to melanoma invading into the dermis. You can also see here. These are the melanosomes that I showed you on the first slide. So melanosomes are large extracellular um, vesicles. They have this very nice string inside, which is the base for the production of pigment. And most of the research about melanosomes is for their ability to produce and ship pigment. And from some unknown reason, melanoma is retained this ability and keeps secreting those melanosomes, as I showed you here in the primary stage. The dermis is filled with it. So what's the deal? What do melanosomes do? In this paper, what we did, we, we took fibroblasts, dermal fibroblasts, we simply treated them with melanosomes from virus sources, so from virus melanoma and from normal melanocytes, and we saw that the melanoma melanosomes transform them into cancer-associated fibroblasts, increasing their proliferation, increasing their migration, and when they were, this is when we were trying to block the melanosomes production and to see that we are blocking the migration, and when these fibroblasts were treated with melanosomes superior from meeting melanoma, once these fibroblasts met melanoma, they enhanced the growth of melanoma in vitro and in vivo, which completely resembled for the fact that those fibroblasts were transformed into cancer-associated fibroblasts. We next figure out the mechanism. We were shaving these melanosomes, uh, taking uh, inspiration from exosomes papers, so we were shaving them with RNAs or with trypsin, and we saw those small RNA population inside of them. We did microRNA profiling, identified microRNA that are enriched in those melanosomes, and figure out that these melanosomes are indeed being shipped into the fibroblast and are not being made in the fibroblast. These microRNA can recapitulate the effect of the melanosomes and can give us more clearly what are the targets of those microRNAs, the shipped through those melanosomes into fibroblasts and which target genes do they target and what is the signaling that is coming to action and the signaling that we were focusing on is the IGF2R blocking and then AKT. So to summarize this paper that was published several years ago, what we found is that in the normal setting, as I told you, melanocytes is spreading melanosomes into the dermis, into the epidermis, giving our skin tone. This is Nevi. In the melanoma, melanoma retained the ability, but melanoma is losing the direction. So in the normal skin, melanosomes are only being shipped upwards towards our skin. And when melanoma is producing melanosome, it's just being spreading them all over. And as I showed you, they are massively being spread into the dermis, superior to melanoma invasion, but they are transforming those fibroblasts by, the, by activating of the IGF ERK signaling and those fibroblasts are transforming into cancer-associated fibroblasts and basically preparing the niche, the metastatic niche for melanoma, since they are very well welcoming melanoma and melanoma growth. While working on this paper, we came across, again, many sections of melanoma patients from different stages. And what we have noticed is the highly proliferation of lymphatic vessels just below melanoma before melanoma invade. So that was another feature of the dermis that has been changed prior to melanoma invading into the dermis. So again, the dermis is sensing that there is melanoma here at the top and there is proliferation of the, these vesicles. And, and the, the proliferation of the vesicles were already reported 30 years ago, but then it was, it was not being researched further. And what we discovered here, this is yet unpublished, we discovered that endothelial cells are uptaking those melanosomes. We have some candidates microRNA, and what they are basically doing, those melanosomes, they are making the endothelial cells to react and to generate this branching and proliferating in order to massively fill the dermis with those veins. 
so in this work, what we are showing is that melanosomes are being secreted to the dermis and are being uptaken not only by fibroblasts, but they are also, also being uptaken by a, a dermal a lymphatic veins, mostly. They are causing this massive proliferation. We are thinking this is via VGF signaling by LED7 arm. So far, I showed you work that are focusing on the primary melanoma. Now, a question is what happened when melanoma is migrating into the dermis, is migrating through the body and generating metastasis. In a recent work, we again stained for those melanosomes. And what was surprising to see is that in different metastases, this is human samples, in different metastases, liver, brain, lung, lymph, we still saw this massive production and secretion of melanosomes into the stroma. So all in the area that is in close proximity to the tumor, the tumor is already filling this area with melanosomes. And the question is why? So in this paper, we were collaborating with fantastic PhD students, a computational lab. We were trying to figure out what is going on with this melanoma that can produce those melanosomes. So here is the TCGA, it's a genome atlas of RNA expression of patients. Every line here is a, is a different patient. And what Dvir was doing, he did clustering of these patients and he found that they basically cluster into four groups. This is a group that is highly signature with immune cells or immune system signature. And this is a group that is highly uh, classified with melanosomes production. And look how surprising the results were. This, the green group is primary melanoma and it's a huge melanoma. There is a bias in the TCGA. So let's not take this in consideration, but let's focus on those two groups. So the immune signature is providing a very good prognosis for those patients. They, they survive much better than these patients. And these patients that are still producing melanosomes survive much worse compared, compared to them significantly. I looked around in, in old paper and I saw that this was also reported by others, that melanosomes, that when melanoma retained the melanosomes capabil uh, production capability, this melanoma survive much less. So it means that maybe we are just looking at the tip of the iceberg. Maybe those melanosomes are carrying so many different roles that we still don't know. What do we miss? Why melanosomes are so critical in melanoma development or melanoma prognosis? When you look at the data recent, in the recent decade, there is a lot of immune therapy, as we all know, mostly for melanoma. But, and it, it, it amazingly progress and, and people are not dying from this disease that they used to die 10 years ago. But look at the numbers. Those papers are reporting that 50% of people still do not respond to immune therapy. And many of them will experience relapse of the tumor within three years, although treated with immune therapy. When you look at the sections of those immune therapy, you see that these patients are still, their tumor is recognized by CD8, by lymphocytes. They're still recognized, they're still there, the tumor is still expressing new antigens, still expressing those mutations that are recruiting the immune system. But it means the tumor is still hot, but still, as I said, these patients do not respond to immune therapy. And the question is why? So as I said, these, these tumors, although still rec they are recognized by the immune system, they are not response to immune therapy. When I, when I took data of responders and non-responders to immune therapy in melanoma, we surprisingly found that melanosomes, again, they are the star. So non-responders people, patient, melanoma patients, express very strong signature of melanosome production. Again, I went back to pu publication from the past and I saw that Slominski already reported that when he blocks pigmentation, see it's over a decade ago, he blocked pigmentation, he increased the T cell toxicity. But then, but then it was just staying there, you know, in literature without uh, catching up. So it means that there is something here in melanosomes that we still don't know, and there is an unknown role of them in, in, in melanoma immunity. 
And this is what, what we are investigating here. What we did, we took melanoma exosomes and melanosomes. We subjected them into proteomics. And we saw the proteins that are signature for those two vesicles of melanoma. We saw that melanosomes are strongly enriched with immune system related proteins. Among them, you can see the antigen presenting system, the HLA. And then we validated using facts that these melanosomes indeed expressing HLA on their membrane. And, and these melanosomes are carrying HLA on their membrane. In that point, I contacted Yeldena Samuels from Weizmann Institute because she performed HLA peptidomics of melanoma. And I told her, look, I found this vesicle. This vesicle is expressing HLA. They are presenting probably peptides and antigens to the environment. And can you help us figure out if it's, if it's true? And if so, what kind of antigen do they present? And this is the figure that you can see here. What we did, we were treating melanoma cells with interferon, which en enhanced the expression of HLA. And in the melanosomes, again, that were secreted from those cells, the HLA was enhanced after interferon treatment. Then they were subjected to all these uh, sequence of uh, filtering and cleaning and colons until we got the data of the HLA peptidomics. What was striking is to see, you can see the, it all, that it's the similar between melanosomes and melanoma. And you can see that the affinity of the vesicles to antigens is very different than the affinity that melanoma cells have for those antigens. And those melanosomes have much higher affinity to antigens compared to the cell. And not just that, when you are investigating the genes or the peptides that are being held by those melanosomes are different, are distinct from the genes that are being held by the cell, which means strongly indicated those melanosomes are going out from the cell, carrying this HLA, the HLA is in the right position for carrying antigen, and they are shipping out from melanoma to the environment as I showed you in the different metastases, and they are carrying a role which we still need to figure out. A little bit of showing you data in culture. Here is melanoma cell. This is cell microscopy. So here is melanoma cell, and this is a T cell that is recognizing melanoma and coming to kill it. But when we were treating this sample with melanosomes, the recognition of the T cell of melanoma was very much weaker. And you can see here, when we were measuring the caspas 3, so we were measuring melanoma killing, melanoma killing was much smaller when melanosomes were around. By mean melanosomes are not just by accident being secreted out of melanoma. These vesicles are big, carrying antigen, and they are bound probably to the T cell, sequestering them with those HLA. And then the T cell cannot then act and react and recognize and kill melanoma. We then collaborated with the Soraski Medical Center and with Sheba Medical Center, two big centers in Israel. We took melanoma patient samples with their uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. And again, we were extracting melanosomes from those patients. We were crossing between melanosomes between patients, and we saw that it's very specific. So it's a patient specific melanosome. And those melanosomes of patients were capable of blocking the activity of the cytotoxic uh, T cell and blocking their uh, work as killing melanoma. So summarizing, I showed you two works that are focusing on primary melanoma and how melanosomes are being spread in close proximity to melanoma and are modifying both fibroblast and endothelial cells here. And I showed you a work that now we are working on, and this is more into melanoma immunity. It's, it's more into the later, more later stage of melanoma, metastasis, metastatic melanoma or invasive melanoma rather than the primary melanoma. Uh, I wanna thank my wonderful group. I put here people from the past and, and, and the current in the lab because many have done the work that I showed you. A big thanks to all of our collaborators and, and to funding. And again, thank you very much for this uh, club and opportunity to talk about things. And we have open position. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, packed and fascinating talk, Karmit. Uh, I will go and read out uh, several questions. So I think it, it, uh, I, I kind of went through 
So people want to understand exactly what melanosomes are. So can you define it? So, so uh, Clotilde asked uh, for, for, for me, melanosomes is the, the name for intracellular uh, compartments where melanin is, is made in melanocyte D. Do you choose the same name for EVs on purpose or you do distinguish between exosomes and melanosomes and how? Melanosomes are, you can distinguish, distinguish between them and exosomes in many ways. First of all, they are bigger. So when you're doing electron microscopy, you can see that they are large. They are more in the shape of a olive rather than circle as exosomes. So they are larger. They have those stripes in the middle, which on those stripes, we have the tyrosine placed and then tyrosine is, is, is changing them into melanin. So it is, it, it's a whole machinery for making pigment. Everything is loaded inside and it's an independent machinery that walk around. There are four stages of maturation of those melanosomes. They secreted out of the cell from, from melanocytes in order to provide the skin tanning and protection from UV. They are, this so is their the major role. And that's the physiological role. And you're saying, or, uh, so in melanoma cells, they have, uh, they acquire oncogenic role. Yeah, that's what right. we are investigating. And also the difference between them and exosomes Exosomes are found in the blood of melanoma patients. They are secreted, they are circulating, they're going far to the lung, to the bone marrow. So far, there are zero evidence that melanosomes are circulating. So what we think is because they are so big and they carry a role in cross proximity to melanoma, they also carry different roles than exosomes. We also have proteomics and, and microRNA profiling of those two vesicles that we know that they are distinct from each other. Yes, but let's suppose we, we look at metastatic melanoma in the brain or somewhere, they would also produce melanosomes and they would also interact in the proximate uh, microenvironment of the metastasis, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's, let's continue. Are melanosomes similar to oncosomes? So that, okay, we covered that. Uh, how did you look at ECM changes uh, uh, after melanosomes taken up by stromosomes? Oh, ECM is a very things. good question. We haven't looked at ECM directly. We are now working on it. We are looking now at ECM, but we are coming from the angle of macrophages. So macrophages that are taking care of the remodeling of the skin. So we're doing now some experiments of how melanosomes are, are affecting the cells that are making ECM. We didn't look at ECM directly. It's a good point. Okay. Uh, any idea about microRNA uh, and and near two one one a copy number in melanosomes as well as in melanosomes receiving fibroblasts? Copy number. So, so copy number. You mean you? What do you mean? You mean how many microRNA? How many copies of near two one one exist inside melanosome? Right. That's what I understand from the question. Maybe Maurice uh, said one. We two. didn't do RNA sec. So if we would do small RNA sec, we would get the reads. And then I can tell you numbers. What we did, we did an array of which is relative amount. So I can tell you that it is enriched compared to the right. cell. This is how we, we came to the conclusion that it's enriched. But I cannot tell you copy number. And do they also contain DNA? Have you ever checked? Oh, that's also that's also a very good point. I, I don't know. We we don't we just want, started, you know. I wonder who uh, asked the question. Taking out the dust. Hmm? I wonder who, who uh, wrote this question. Um, we we can easily check it because if you know of any DNA binding protein, because RNA binding protein exists in the proteomics for sure. If you know of any DNA binding proteins, we can I can send the mass spec of those melanosomes and we can easily right, detect right. whether it's there. Okay, uh, can you see histones, for instance? I, we need to look for it. It's a very good point. I we didn't we ignore DNA until now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can uh, how long can we uh, continue? Because there are like several more questions. Can we just go on? Well, yes, uh, yes. We have uh, we have a little bit more time, so you're welcome to continue. Fantastic. All right. So microRNA uh, two eleven is enriched uniquely in normal melanocytes, and small amounts are seen in keratinocytes. With respect to cancer, how is it different, differentially, differentially regulated? If you mean, 
if you mean that how it is regulated inside melanoma, the expression of the near, we think it's the same regulation. So it's the same transcription factor that is making this, this microRNA. It's an intronic microRNA, so the whole gene is being made and the microRNA is being cut out. So I, I think it's a good point, but as far as I know, and, and I have investigated the expression of this smear, the regulation of the expression is similar, same machinery. Why it is expressed in keratinocytes? I, because it is lineage specific, the host gene and the microRNA are regulated by the transcription lineage factor, MITF. So it is only expressed in the melanocyte lineage. The two one one. So if melanocyte, if keratinocyte has it, it's probably come with the melanosomes that were carrying it with it. But I can tell you that when we when we uh, compare the microRNA inside normal melanosomes and melanoma melanosomes, they are different. Mir two one one is still there because it's very lineage uh, microRNA. But other microRNAs, some are enriched, some are less. Uh, were the T-cell melanosome experiments with tumor antigen-specific T-cell or RT1 with melanoma pools uh, with peptide antigen, uh, question mark? Wondering if this is a suppression of antigen recognition or overall T-cell function. Ah, that's a very good point. Um, we are figuring it out these days. What we think from the more data that we have if it's something that is in your interest, we can talk more after. But so far, we were using the OT1. So we have the OT1 T cell that are recognizing the uh, OVA on melanoma, and we have the melanoma, and this is the paired. We were treating with those melanosomes of OVA compared to melanosomes coming from B16, regular B16 that doesn't have the, the antigen. And we saw that it is antigen specific. So what we are thinking is that the T cell have the TCR, and the HLA with the OVA or the HLA with the antigen are bounding to the TCR, and that's it. The T cell is being now chopped. It is catched by melanosome, and then it cannot anymore with the TCR go and recognize melanoma. What happened to the phenotype of the T cell? I think they are going through ex exhaustion because they are being just hanging out there without getting into their final stage, into their signal two of uh, secreting the perforin and killing melanoma. So I think that they are staying exhausted. We still haven't performed the rna -seg. This is really ongoing research right now. Um, what about uptake into other types of immune cells? Very good point also. Yeah, it's very good questions, all the questions. Um, other type of immune cells. We are studying now, Roma is studying in the lab macrophages because macrophages are just, you know, they are running around our skin and they are the eye robot of the skin. So they are uptaking everything. The tattoo, tattoo that we have, it's basically macrophages that are uptaking the pigment. So if they, are, if they are taking normal melanosomes, that's fine. But if they take melanoma melanosome, this is something that there are thousands of papers about macrophages, two papers de describing melanosome and macrophage interaction. So Roma is doing a beautiful work about macrophages and how they are being also transformed and affected by those uh, melanosomes. But th that's it. Like uh, Shivang is also doing a work with the interaction with B cell. We are thinking that there is induction of anti-melanosome production of antibodies, and that's it. So you know there are a variety of others that we haven't touched yet. Okay, does, does the melanosome HLA1 uh, immunopeptide dif differ significantly from cell surface, i.e. known tumor antigen and tumor-specific antigen peptide? Uh, well, right. That's also a good question. The HLA, I think it's the same. We haven't characterized it specifically the HLA. I assume it's the same because Yardena somewhere is using the same column for both of them for the HLA coming from melanosomes and HLA coming from melanoma. So she's using the same column, same. So I, I guess it's the same HLA shape and characterization. In terms of antigens, yes, they are distinct. So they have like 47 uh, common um, antigens and 62 antigens that are specific for melanosome, which is crazy because it means that there is a machinery. I know nothing about it. I'm just saying, 
we, we have the data and it was repeated three times. Um, so we know that the, there is a machinery inside the cell that is taking care of those melanosomes, uploading them with a specific antigens. Who know, maybe, maybe these antigens are bacteria. You know, maybe melanosomes are responsible for cleaning or presenting specific type of immune reaction. Maybe they are responsible for just presenting new antigens. We need to investigate whether these are new antigens or not. So somehow the, the cell have their own little uh, worker that have been taking care of a specific set of antigens, which is, it's crazy to think, but uh, it's something to investigate. All right, and one last comment here. So melanosomes, if they are found outside the cell, are probably released inside another big plasma membrane enclosed vesicles, which would fit your data on HLA and presentation on t -cells. Melanosomes remain the term, remains the term uh, for an intracellular compartment, not an EV. So that's, that's, that could be a, uh, a future debate. And there is a, there is a hmm? huge research and Grasta, you are hosting Grasta and this is her forte, melanosome. So there is a huge investigation how melanosomes are being secreted from the cell. So there is no one conclusion in the field. Right. Some right. are it's definitely right. showing that they are being released as a single vesicle and without taking pieces of the, of the cell surface. Uh, so it's a good comment, but, but it is a very strong debate in the field. All right. Thank you very much again to our meet. I'm going to hand it back to Ken. Thank you for hosting us uh, as a society. Thank you so and, much. Uh, yeah. Well, I very much enjoyed the, the discussion here and uh, learning about some of the science that your um, ISREV uh, members are doing. So thanks to the society, uh, to Tomer, to Netta for uh, joining today. And thank you very much, Dani and Karmit for presenting your work. Um, so we um, are very grateful also to all of our attendees who have come in today and who have asked some interesting questions, some stimulating questions. And um, so I hope that you all have a good rest of the day, a good rest of the evening. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again very soon on an EV club. So thanks again and take care, everyone. Thank Bye. you so much, Ken. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.